1930 to 2021, 90 years plus four months, that is the span of life of Christian Cardinal Wigan Tumu on earth, that he spent on earth to give us what he left behind. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Viewpoint. In this special edition, we are looking at the legacy of Christian Cardinal Wigan Tumi, whom the world got the news that he passed on to eternity on the night of the 2nd, breaking the 3rd of April 2021, here in Douala. In today's edition of the program, we are looking at Cardinal Christian Wigan Tumi from different perspectives. And with me in the studio, we have those who would talk to us about his life, about who he was. Permit me to receive Shei Tadz Adamo Mbizla. He is the president of Bongnafti Dwala and automatically the first vice president of Nsoda, that is so Development and Cultural Association. Good evening, Shei, and thank you for accepting our invitation. Uh, good uh, evening, Mr. Venusius, and uh, I feel delighted to be here. Actually, it is our pleasure having you to talk about this illustrious son of Cameroon, Christian Cardinal Wigan Tumi, and as the president of Bongnafti here in Douala, we should say without mixing words that he was your subject. Automatically, he was my subject, and uh, sometimes I wondered if I was worthy enough to have him as a subject. Of course, and playing that role of uh, a leader. Mm -hmm. Um, leading him leading him when it comes to some uh, uh, aspects of life mm -hmm. but automatically subjecting myself to him when it comes to spiritual counseling of course yeah that is what we in fact all of us cameroonians we had when it comes to spiritual matters he was the lone cardinal in cameroon the only cardinal right up till now perhaps the only cardinal in the sub-african region in that's in the semak zone he was the only cardinal as of now accompanying shade as adamo is uh of course he's not a new person dr nick Nguanyam. good evening doctor and thank you for being there for us uh, thank you it's a pleasure to be here and uh, to talk about uh, his eminence christian cardinal to me it's a real pleasure a thank pleasure you. for us as well ladies and gentlemen let us talk a look at christian cardinal to me like i said he was a clergyman he was ordained in 1966 in Boya, and he was consecrated a bishop in Rome by Saint Pope John Paul II. He was named a cardinal in 1988 by Saint Pope John Paul II. In today's edition of the program, we are looking at his legacy, and we begin from looking at Christian Cardinal Tumi as a clergyman. And before we get to look at his religious life that he lived for this 90 years plus four months, we want to begin. She, I begin with you. Who was Christian Cardinal Tumi to you as an individual? Uh, as an individual, Christian Cardinal Tumi was um, a father and a counselor. Mm -hmm. Because as a leader of the community, um, in three occasions, I didn't have a lot of encounters with him. Mm -hmm. you know, in three occasions, I've had to go to him to seek his opinion on how to handle certain crucial issues. And... Um, I must tell you, he's a very welcoming father. Mm -hmm. If you sit with him just for 10 minutes, you can gain wisdom that can help you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Because he addresses matters in a very succinct and very calm manner. Mm -hmm. And then he has this, this look that when he looks at you, you, know, you, you, you can feel his mind being transmitted through the look. Mm -hmm. a, and searching, a searching, a, a look. searching look and, mm -hmm. and you can be able to debug so much he is telling you without using words mm -hmm. uh, he, he's sometimes like warning you he's sometimes like trying to say I want you to lead the people faithfully mm -hmm. I want you to be somebody with integrity I want you to be truthful and uh, during my last encounter with him I remember he told me be accountable mm -hmm. and and you can understand where he's coming from. Of course. He, 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 we are living in a very corrupt society mm -hmm. where leaders take advantage of their positions and they can siphon public wealth or money means for the development of the community and mm -hmm. so on. So in other words, he was warning me and saying, you have to make sure you are accountable. I have been told, I have heard 
that young people have this this, this tendency on on on, on, on explained desire for money mm -hmm. that is not theirs there's nothing wrong in wanting to have money but you should have that which belongs to you mm -hmm. and that is what he actually meant mm -hmm. so my encounters with him we are very memorable that immediately i learned he had gone i i, I had a time reflecting and replaying the tape in my mind and obviously i must tell you i miss him mm -hmm. he is one of the few uh, leaders or the great men than so ever had. When uh, this morning I was thinking about his generation, and when I looked at those who lived his era, it's difficult to think about those people without thinking about uh, Professor Nsokeka, Bernard von Lund. Bernard von Lund, yes. You cannot think about him without thinking about people like... Um, Archbishop Paul Vedrakov. Bishop Paul Vedrakov. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can think about him without going back to people like... Um, uh, Professor Lantum Daniel. Professor Daniel Lantum. Mm -hmm. uh, and those who also created an impact in Scotland, like Pa Piti Saka, mm -hmm. who, Saka yes. who constructed the BCGE. Mm -hmm. um, people like uh, She Lukong. She, yes. She Olu. O Olu. Yes. yes. They were popularly called Olu. Yes. You know, those people something i could summarize this morning is that they had a great test for knowledge they had a great test for humanity they wanted to see society evolve mm -hmm. and they did just that i was just looking and i said of that generation it seems he was the last standing and now that he is gone we just need to be asking ourselves what is it we are going to do to do to 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 complete that wish they started and perhaps do it much better mm -hmm. what are we going to do there is so much that we need to do again in terms of recanalizing <coughs> our youthful minds mm -hmm. to make sure they match their path because to be able to match the path of um, christian cardinal to me to be able to match the path of Bernard von Lund, mm -hmm. to be able to match the path of uh, uh, Sylvester Kilo. Kilo, yes. And uh, uh, Bishop Bedrokov. Bedrokov, yes. You must, you, must, you must be able to develop certain traits, certain characteristics that will be serve as push factors mm -hmm. and be able to come out of the current world we are living in because the, the present society is too complex. So they were like living... He, you said he was the last person. He was like, they were living their own world completely different from what we have this time. Full of corruption, I full think, of all. I think what helped and shaped them mm -hmm. is that besides the exposure to the academic world, most of them, they studied outside. The, uh, Lantum went to Ibadan. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Cardinal, Cardinal and, went and, to and France Bishop, and, yes. and, and so on. Yes. Besides being exposed to the world, they, 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 they were exposed but still had the undertones. That which was their That their culture. is their culture, mm -hmm. their very foundation. And you remember in those days, the foundation of Nso, which we expect should still be now, mm -hmm. was unique. Nso was founded on the truth. Mm -hmm. Nso was founded on humanity. So it was founded on communal life. Mm -hmm. uh, when I when I mentioned these things, I, I remember when I was growing as a young boy in Ma village, part of what they call Kum subdivision now. Mm -hmm. If 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 somebody's purse fell along the footpath, you pick it, you make sure you tie it with a small rope to a to a to a, to a, to a small a stick, stick yes. and pin, pin the stick the such that it is bending to the pathway. So even if the person stays wherever he went to for a month and comes back, there's no way he will pass along the footpath without seeing his purse. Mm -hmm. But now they seize it from your pocket. <laughs> yes. That's something that wasn't. Mm -hmm. I, I, I remember if, if, if it was announced that somebody died in the village, every woman went into his uh, closet, got corn flour, mm -hmm. got vegetable, and, 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 and go straight to the funeral home. Mm -hmm. And when, the, when we get to the funeral home, all the flour is kept in one big basket, all the vegetables are brought together, and the women in the quarter participate in picking the vegetables and all the cooking. And 
they, they are able to feed everyone who came to the funeral home. Mm -hmm. The funeral is done or the burial is done on the same day. And the men actively take part. The youths know what they should do. Mm -hmm. They are responsible with their youthful energy for digging the, the grave, grave for standing the grave, mm -hmm. for burying the, 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 the whoever died. Mm -hmm. And that is communal life. In fact, it, it is what is it part of human philosophy that I like. What you hear in Africa, the Ubuntu. Yes. I am because, because you, you are. are. Mm -hmm. You are so because we are. Bernard von uh, Fonlon and Cardinal Tumi, mm -hmm. they are part of that, that generation that they lived because others were. Mm -hmm. They didn't live for themselves. They made sure they incorporated that idea into their minds. And that's why uh, Cardinal Tumi was so selfless. He is not among those who will amount wealth, have things around them, and then have things they can call personal. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, you try to look at those priests that revolve around him, or the generation that he ordained, and the way they try to practice their spiritual life, find out it's they different. tend to have that tendency okay. because of that kind. Let's take Dr. Nick. When she was speaking, he said he was like a spiritual counselor to him. And he has indicated an issue where he insisted, be accountable. <coughs> you should certainly have had the opportunity to know Cardinal Tumi at a, level, at, your, at a personal level. Who was Cardinal Tumi to you? Uh, thank you very much. I, I knew Cardinal Tumi <laughs> as a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I believed in him and what he stood for. And um, he he knows my <coughs> wife and her family. She know my wife uh, Florence. She grew with the Doctor D in Bambui mm -hmm. when the Cardinal was there. So he he knew that he knew that family very well. And uh, so we kind of like just got on and you know were part of his ministry whatever he was doing mm -hmm. and you just knew that this was a great father a great priest someone you could relate with and i kept a close eye and a close ear on him then it is in 1993 when i was facing the rocks mm -hmm. When you know, sometimes you come to a place where you are caught between the hammer and the hard place. Mm -hmm. When you when you get to that place, then it is only other human beings that are trustworthy that you can count on that can help you. And that moment came to my to my life in 1993 when I was in working in Betwa, where a young man called Abundulangwe Louis was killed, and I had to 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 to, to say what happened mm -hmm. you know because there were two stories that he had been poisoned that he had been killed I, I came out with the fact that he had been killed and I had to say it at the risk of my own life so it's at that moment that you know I drew close to the cardinal for advice and protection I drew very close to uh, Bishop Vezikov mm -hmm. and I grew very, I, I came very close to Dr. Solomon Fogway mm -hmm. and I also I came closer to Professor Victor Anomangu. Mm -hmm. But amongst the three of them, I had known Professor Anomangu for, for, for many years, starting from 1977. Mm -hmm. I went to medical school in QC in 1977. So he was my professor, and after that I worked with him and so on. And then he is, he is Professor Anomangu as minister who gave me the WHO scholarship to go to Nairobi and, and London mm -hmm. and study. So. He was my. He was. He was guiding me in the profession, so to speak. And I really, by my being a surgeon, was not an accident. I wanted to be like him. So that is, you know, that is someone I hung on a lot. So I had these four people who are guiding me. And so when I ran into trouble, these four 
were by me. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, the cardinal started to, f to feed me, you know, feed my spirit in, this, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a particular way and to strengthen me and to show me the way and to encourage me and so on. And every word of his, you know, that fell in my spirit was not lost. You know, he doesn't speak too much. He's a, he's a very responsible person and therefore when he gives you five minutes of his time, yes. whatever you're doing with him, you should make sure that you don't let his, his word drop. Okay, because he doesn't waste words, he doesn't waste time, and so on. And what you come to realize about him is that he works on principles. He's not, he's not there to talking or trying to make you feel good or something. He works on principles, and he has so many other people to attend to. So the little time you have with him, when you use it properly, it would always yield fruit. Mm -hmm. All right? And so that was his relationship. And then um, something changed. Something changed in um, in in nineteen in two thousand and eight. Something changed in two thousand and eight, and you know the country has been going through a lot of difficulties. Mm -hmm. um, let me say that from two thousand and three, I became particularly interested in politics. The idea was to try to see, you know, what can I bring on board in, as a contribution, so th to, to 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 help our nation grow. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in the SDF at the time, mm -hmm. but over time I realized that there was something that was not exactly right. Mm -hmm. There was something that was not exactly right because I don't just I don't just follow a crowd. I take time off to study and to find out what works, what doesn't work, why do things work, why don't they work, and so on. And you see, after the presidential elections. And, and, and a couple of other things. There was a lot of trouble in mm -hmm. the nation and I had to look at the root causes and see what is the way forward and so on. And uh, I realized that the way the party was structured, you know, the, 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 there was something that was not exactly right. Mm -hmm. So with time, I, I, I withdrew and I was in the, I was in the, in the, in the civil society, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So in 2008, that's when the story begins. In 2008, where that I think it might be the seventh or the eighth of December of 2008, I was on a mission going to um, to the United States to you know was on the on a business trip with the American uh, with business people put together by the U U.S. Embassy, mm -hmm. and so I passed by him to greet him and to have his blessings and uh, just to say hello. Mm -hmm. And that is the day that my life changed. That day, my life changed. In what ways? I had a nice conversation with him, as always. And uh, just before I left, you know, like you, you talk just about everything. Then you are, it's like, okay, see you next time. Mm -hmm. And then a thought came, a thought came into my mind. And that thought, because I asked the questions, that thought and his answers changed my life from then on and those thoughts and his answers are going to change Cameroon all right because I made up my mind mm -hmm. yeah. it became a bridge it became it became a vision and it became um, I don't know what I'm focused on it mm -hmm. let me explain as I'm about to leave remember in November of 2008 President Barack Obama is voted president-elect of the US yes and I'm looking at President Barack Obama and something is coming to my mind. I am six years older than he is. And the other thing, I'm looking at him and say, okay, look at this, this black guy, this black boy, first generation American. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, he's just been, his father was there and then he's born there and he becomes the president. How did he do that? How, how on earth can somebody do that? You see, I didn't just take it for granted. Mm -hmm. That was the first question I asked the, the, the cardinal. The second question I asked, him, uh, I asked was, no, basically, that's the question I asked. And the second question was, how is he going to help Africa? Mm -hmm. Those two things. And from then on, the conversation took a different turn. And my eyes were opened on a lot of things. And that's the day I got to understand what politics is. Mm -hmm. And that's the day I got to understand how things should work. And that's the day the foundation was properly laid. And I started to be focused on what I was doing. Number one, he, to he told me that President... Obama did not win because he is strong. You know, we keep saying strong people, strong. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. He, 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 no, no, that's not why he won. Professor, uh, President Obama, number one, won because he was on a platform. So the concept of platform was born. 
okay in my mind i became very clear so for instance if i asked you how, how is the world run the world the world this world we see runs mm -hmm. on two spiritual platforms mm -hmm. there's the kingdom of god and the kingdom of, of satan darkness, of so course. when you, it doesn't matter what you want to do choose your kingdom on mm -hmm. which platform do you want to run mm -hmm. that's why the bible says you cannot be lukewarm either you, you must are, take sides you must take sides mm -hmm. either you are with god or you are with satan mm -hmm. there are no two ways all right and then when you are with god this is what you get if you are with satan this is what you get so from day one it doesn't matter what you do on this earth choose your, choose your platform mm -hmm. that's the first thing i learned that strong lesson of a platform if you're going to be a christian then be a devoted christian and know what it means to be and whatever you do should be according to those principles mm -hmm. and point three don't be mixing up things are you are you getting what I'm exactly saying? good that's the first lesson i learned mm -hmm. the second so how, how do how, how so in terms of politics you now understand that when you take somebody like the leader of the SDF at the time, mm -hmm. Nijon Fundi, you know, there was this thing in the SDF over the punching people, punching people, I don't like you, I punch you out, yes. eight, article 8.2 and two, so on. Yes. And when you are doing that, you are shooting yourself in the foot. You're, you're killing yourself mm -hmm. because... Internal fighting. You no, know, besides the internal fighting, it's principles. Mm -hmm. You alone, as a human being, you are not strong. I hope that we all understand that. Yeah. There is nothing like a strong human being on earth. You don't exist. Mm -hmm. It is the people who make you strong, and that's the message I want to push. Okay, when you are with people, or you have an institution, know that it is your workers who make you grow. Like uh, the president was saying, he is the president on Soda mm -hmm. or the vice president on Soda. Mm -hmm. He uh, alone, he is nothing. Mm -hmm. But it is that collection of people managing things well that uplift him, and it's the people who make him big. And if he if he doesn't respect the people, then he's nothing. He would drop. Are you getting me? It's very, very important. So it doesn't matter where you are working in the ham in the house, you are a minister, you are it doesn't matter who you are, it is the people who make you who you are. Mm -hmm. It's a very strong message. Then the second thing, um so that was a lesson, mm -hmm. right? And I'm, I'm being very detailed about this because we are not just here to talk about the cardinal exactly. for the sake of talking. Exactly. He is gone, but we are talking because we are trying to build something and let That's everybody what we'll look at his legacy. Yeah, learn what? from it. Yes. Because like I was telling uh, Mr. Adamu afterwards, we are going to create a foundation mm -hmm. where all these things will be will, will be packaged and will be taught so that we can continue we to can transmit it, transmit to it and, and he will continue. Though dead, he will continue to live. Mm -hmm. so, so I asked him, how are, we, how are we going to change Cameroon? Mm -hmm. How are we going to change Cameroon? He said, "Good, watch my lips. Good Christians and good Muslims must join politics. And when you join politics, there are two things that you must do. Mm -hmm. Number one, you must make sure that good policies are put in place. That's what politics is all about. Mm -hmm. Number two, make sure that those good policies are implemented to the letter. That's all. And then he went forward for, for that to say, if I were not a prelate, I would have joined politics to make sure it's done right. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then I asked him this question. Don't you think this, the, the civil society working very hard can actually do what you are saying without going to politics? Because politics seems to be all over the whole place and doesn't seem to make sense. He said no. It doesn't matter how hard the civil... And that's another question he asked, answered in a very emphatic way. Mm -hmm. He said no. It is the policies that run the country. It doesn't matter what you do in the civil in the in the civil society. If you don't change the you cannot change the policies, nothing would happen. Okay. All right? Okay. And therefore he he, he forced me now to, 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 to begin to look at ways and means of contributing into policy change. Mm -hmm. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. And that's why I joined the politics. Not because I just want to be there as a hand clapper, but to begin to work with those principles. And these are some of the things that he said before you take the microphone. Be the salt and the light of the earth. Mm -hmm. Number two, do unto others as you want it done unto you. Unto you. Are okay. you getting what, what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Be the salt and the light, light of the world, and the golden rule. Do unto others what you want them do unto you. We are talking about to me already in politics. Uh, Shay, there was something here that Cardinal Tumi wanted to become a president. He was vying for the presidential post in Cameroon, which certainly you would have followed. Sure. I yes. Did. When you got it, did it make any sense to you? Uh, when I got that information, you know, at um, uh, starting from 1990, mm -hmm. um, when I was just coming out of secondary school, and multipartism was setting in, mm -hmm. and uh, like um, Dr. Nick just mentioned, People were looking up to the SDF, and then uh, at that time, I, I started becoming very keen, you know, 
listening to uh, party policies, listening to where they want to take us to. Mm -hmm. And where things didn't go right, Cardinal Tumi played his role. And his role is that of ensuring that those who take part in the politics do it the right way so that the right results are obtained. When he became so vocal, people started thinking that, ah, he's uh, looking up to the political seat. Yes. And so the idea of him wanting or possibly being the president is not what he said. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, I want to run for the presidency. Mm -hmm. It is the silent wish of some Cameroonians because they, they already... Were seeing in him the qualities of the what they want. Mm -hmm. They were already wishing that <coughs> somebody could be up there that can be able to refocus the minds of Cameroonian leaders mm -hmm. or the political uh, leadership towards what Cameroonians want to obtain. Mm -hmm. And so when you started hearing it coming, it was just a silent way of saying that's what people... I know you journalists are very smart at trying to push it down the throat. Yes. So and at the point they are doing that, they are wishing that he will say, yes, say I it. want to stand. Yes. But he told us categorically, he is not there for that. Mm. Rather, he played the role that as a priest, he should play while in the secular world, mm -hmm. where he interacts with a lay person. Yes. yes. He preaches to you the spirit of tolerance. He preaches to you the truth. And you know that the, 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 the concept of the truth is applicable even in social, political, economic life. Exactly. The truth cuts so across. The, the truth cuts across. Mm -hmm. When these virtues evaporate from our political platform, we will have leadership that cause pain. Mm -hmm that make people feel pain and they don't feel the you know when 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 at times you see people desecrate they'll say they desecrated the seal or the flag mm -hmm. why would somebody who is so patriotic desecrate his own flag mm -hmm. that's just to tell you that the person that that patriotism has left that person the person is angry now why would somebody be angry they are looking up to leadership and so um, uh, the cardinal's rule was that of trying to change the, the political mindset. thinking mm -hmm. of our leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Nguanyam just mentioned the article 8.2. Uh, 8 8 mm -hmm. yeah, I've always called it the article of intolerance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, no chances for no errors. Chan <laughs> no chances for errors. Mm -hmm. But you, you realize that uh, uh, when you look at, um, he mentioned Obama. Obama emerged because they had strong institutions, mm -hmm. yeah. not strong people. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have a strong democratic, institu uh, uh, democratic institution, you had a strong legal system, you have a strong uh, um, economic system, everything is strong and the rule of law is firm and just. Okay, the rule of law is firm and just. Uh, I would love us to continue talking about Christian Cardinal Tumi and we can talk the whole day talking about him. But for want of time, when we come back in part two of this discussion, we would look at other issues concerning him, probably about the Anglophone crisis and his quest for peace and justice. That is all we had time for this first part of <coughs> this discussion. Up next will be the news in the English language and we would be back again to talk more on it on part two. Goodbye.